In this webcast, I'm going to show you how to set up a document on Microsoft Word in MLA format. So the first thing you want to do is you want to insert your header. So you can do that two ways. You can either double click up where the header should be, or you can go to View, Header, and Footer. And that will also take you to your header. Once you get there, you're going to go into the header footer format, or you can go to Insert, Page Numbers, or you can just go into this little um, section right here for the header and footer and put the page number in there. After that, you want to type in your last name. Highlight all of that text and then when you go to the home page, you're going to want to align it right. And then you're also going to want to turn it into Times New Roman, font, 12 point font. So make sure that it says Times New Roman and it's 12 point font. And then you can close out of that header and footer. Sometimes they have an option over here. It's like a big red button to close out of the header and footer. Mine comes up right here. Once you get out of there, you want to make the rest of your document also Times New Roman. Once you've selected that font, it should show up as one of your top options. And then you need to go on ahead and make sure that your paper is double spaced. So I go into this button right here with the two arrows pointing up and down, and I click the 2.0, which means it's double spaced. The very first thing that goes in your heading is your first and last name. So I'm going to type my first and last name. And then you put your professor's name. So you put professor and then whoever, whatever the last name of your professor is. So if it was Mr. Street, it would be Professor Street. If it was Miss Henson, it would be Professor Henson. Then you skip a line and you're going to type the, um, the name of your course fully out. You're not going to do any abbreviations. So if you're an introduction to early college, you're not going to put IEC. You're going to put introduction to early college. And you're going to capitalize all of the important words. Then I would put which block number you are because I have two introduction to early college classes and I need to know which one you're in. And then I plus ent press enter again. And then after I do that, I'm going to do the date that I'm submitting the assignment or the date that I am creating it for right now for these purposes because I'm not going to submit my paper just yet. So I'm going to put today's date, 11 December 2012. After that, you would go to the center of your, um, you would center your text and you would put a title. Notice how I don't have any excess spaces between my last line of my heading and my title. I literally just clicked enter once and then I centered my text. And let's say I'm doing my paper on how illegal downloads have changed the music industry. Notice that I capitalized all of the important words, but not any articles like A and the anything like that. And then I click enter again to go down. And then I'm going to left align my text, which is how the entire rest of my document should be aligned, except for my works cited page. I would tab over one time, and I would start typing my attention grabber. Now, we talked about attention grabbers in class, um, so I'm not going to talk about them right now. What, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up a works cited page. So let's say that I type some stuff into here, and then I'm done, and then I want to insert a page break in order to get my works cited page on its own page. So I'm going to do insert, and then I'm going to do page break. Break, page break. Now it's taken me to a completely new page, and it's taken me to the top of that page. So I'm going to center my text, and I'm going to give it the title of Works Cited. Then I press Enter one time, and then I left align my text. And then I want to make sure that in my Works Cited page, I have the reverse indent. So I'm going to take my little hourglass over here where the margins are, and I'm going to move my bottom part of my hourglass over to the half inch mark. My top part of the hourglass needs to be here. Sometimes when you move this one, the top one will follow with it. So you would have to go on ahead and click this one by itself and move it back to where it needs to go. Now to create a works cited page, you're going to have to know a few things about the um, source that you're trying to cite. You're going to have to know the author's name if there is one. You're going to have to know the name of the website, the title of the article, and also the publisher's name, the publishing date, and the date that you access this article. So I'm going to show you an example of how I would find that on a website. So let's say that over here, I'm going into I'm going into Google search, and then I'm going to search illegal download music industry. Notice that when I'm searching these terms, I'm just using the important words or key phrases that, I use in, that I'm using for my um, entire topic. 
I'm not using a question. I'm not saying how does illegal downloads affect the music industry. That would bring a part of a lot of opinion pieces. If I did that, I'll show you that I'm going to get a lot of blogs. So, how does illegal download affect the music industry? And when I do that, I'm going to get a lot of blogs. So let's see. eHow is kind of like a bloggy thing. Free music and its effects. Well, that might not be too bad. Studymode.com, I saw a lot of you citing this. This is actually not something that you can cite. This is a website in which you can purchase a paper. This is completely not 100% um, what a teacher wants you to do. So please never use this website and cite it. Um, but usually when you do this type of thing, it brings up a lot of blogs. And you know what blogs look like. They say blog spot at the top of them. And they're just like this one right here, blog.zentro.com. And that kind of tells you that, you know, you've searched something that's just not very reliable. Anything that's a blog is not reliable. So let's go back and let's take out our question. And let's just do our key terms that are important. So illegal downloads and music industry and no question mark. So now I found an article for illegal downloads. Let's do um, The Guardian. So The Guardian is obviously some sort of magazine or newspaper because it has a whole bunch of different topics in which you can search articles. And if you notice, there's an author's name and his picture and a title for the article. This is a very 100% reliable source. If you go down to the very bottom, it'll say that it's been um, published by The Guardian News in 2012. Um, and that the Guardian newspaper has read over his article and has approved of all of it being fact. Now you can cite anything in this body of this article, but you cannot cite any of these comments because these would not be reliable sources. So you would just stick with this article. So if I wanted to cite this article on my Works Cited page, what I would do is I would need to know the website name, which is The Guardian. I would need to know the title of the article, which is Illegal Music File Sharing is Now Mainstream. I would need to know the author's name, which is Lonre Bakari. And I would need to know the date that it was published to the web, which was 18 September 2012. And then I would need to know the publisher's name. And the publisher's name is actually still Guardian News and Media, Unli and Media Limited. I would use Media Limited because Guardian News is already the name of the website and of the newspaper. And Media Limited would be a better, um, a better name for the copyright publisher. So I'm going to go down to my Works Cited page. And since I did have an author's name, my author's name was up here. That's going to go first, Lonre Bakari. So I'm going to go back to my Works Cited. I'm going to do, oh, we're going to do his last name first. I think that's how you spell it. Yep, Bakari. And then I'm going to do a period and then a space. And then the title of the article goes next, and it goes in quotation marks. So I'm going to do illegal music file sharing is now mainstream. Then I close, before I close my parentheses, I actually add my punctuation. So in this case, it's just a period. And then I would close my um, quotation marks. And then I would space over one. And the next thing that goes is the title of the website in italics. You go over here for italics, this little I. And then I would type the website's name, which is The Guardian. And then I would put my punctuation. I would take it off italics, and then I would do a space. The next thing is the, going to be the publisher name. So I'm going to use the media company, or Media Limited, as the publisher name. Go back, Media Limited. Then I would put a comma, and then the publishing date. So this article was published on Tuesday, 18 September 2012. So I would put 18. And then I would do September, the abbreviation for it, and 2012. Anytime that you have a month that is long, not like March or May, but longer like September or October, you would use the abbreviation for it. Then you'd put a period and a space. And then you'd put web. And then another period and another space. And then the date that you accessed it. You don't have to put access. You just put the date. So today's date is 11 December 2012.
and then I would put a period and that's it. Now I have cited that source. So now anytime that I want to use a quote or some information from this article, I know that after my information I need to put Bacare in parentheses after that. Or I need to use his name whenever I'm citing that source since I do have the author's name. Now remember if you don't have an author's name, let's pretend that he doesn't exist and that we just had the title of the article. If we just had the title of the article, we would just take out the author's last name and we would start the citation with the name of the title of the article. Now what I'm going to show you is how I would search for a topic in a search and how I would find, a, how, how, how I would find information to create a thesis statement. So what I would do is I would go to google.com and I want to do my article on a legal download and music industry. Once I go there, I can read a few articles on illegal music and how it's affected the music industry. So this is the one we just looked at. Um, this one is talking about how does illegally downloading music impact the music industry. This would be a great article because it's talking about exactly what I am trying to talk about in my paper. And the really great thing about this article is that it gives me little topic sentences that tell me different things, different effects that the illegal downloading has had on the music industry. So specifically, it's caused financial losses, layoffs, investment in new music, and new marketing strategies. I think the three I want to choose as my three main points will be financial losses, layoffs, and new, market stra new marketing strategies. So what I would do is I would go back to Google. And now I would have more of a direction for when I'm searching. So I'm going to do uh, illegal downloads, music, and then I'm going to do um, layoffs industry for the music industry. And then I find a couple of different articles, and I'm going to look through these little um, snippets that they give us of them to try and figure out if I can find anything about how it is caused to leading mass layoffs in the music industry. I would like this site, but except for it's Wikipedia, and that's not a really reliable website, so I'm not going to use that. Let's see if I can find one really good source. So here's one. This is a reliable website, I know, because, let's see, if you look at the entire page, you can kind of see, oh, nope, never mind, this is not, this is a blog. WordPress is a blog, so we're not going to use that one. Let's go back up. Let's, instead of doing layoffs, let's do loss of jobs. Now, I don't want to do this website because I've already done it before. So I'm going to go to musicunited.com. It's an educational program, so I know that it's actually a reliable website. Let's talk about it. It says that... One credible study by the Institute for Policy of Innovation pegs the harm at $12.5 billion in losses to the U.S. economy as well as over 70,000 lost jobs and more than 2 billion lost wages to American workers. So more than 70,000 jobs have been lost in the music industry. So this is some information that I can use for that first body paragraph about how it has caused, um, how illegal downloading has caused the music industry to lose some jobs. So since I kind of know what my thesis statement is, right, it's going to be talking about illegal downloading leading to financial losses, layoffs, and new marketing strategies, I can go on ahead and write my thesis statement. So I can put illegal downloads have led to economic loss, unemployment, and the creation of new ways to market music for the music industry. Notice that I didn't phrase it exactly how I found in the article because I'm not going to cite this. This is going to be my um, thesis statement. So I'm just going to put illegal downloads have led to economic loss, 
unemployment, and the creation of new ways to market music for the music industry. It's very clear. It's talking about what it is, what it's causing, and for whom.